Hello, hello, everybody. It's a privilege to connect with you again here on Edify. My name is Robert Mwando. Thank you all who have viewed, liked, commented, and shared our videos. Your feedback is valuable to us. Ultimately, when you share our videos, you participate in changing lives. In today's Edify Byte, I will talk to you about connecting and staying connected. I was pondering what Holy Scripture teaches about effective communication, and Ephesians chapter 4.29 came to mind. It says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. In another scripture, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2, the wisest king that ever lived gives us this counsel. Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. And in verse 13, he says, To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. The COVID-19 situation has thrust us all into the deeper end in the pool of communication. With social distancing measures, travel restrictions, and ban on public gatherings, we must adapt to technologically enhanced means of communication. Teleconferencing, video calling, and electronic letters are fast becoming the norm. I have personally found it difficult to gauge the level of engagement with a virtual audience. With video and audio settings on mute on the receiving side of the call, how do I keep connected? Be it with a virtual audience, small or large audiences, or even in one-on-one -on -one interactions, Connecting is everything when it comes to communication. We all know it when we don't have a good connection on phone. How about when we are communicating with people in person? How do I tell? How do I know that I have connected with others? Leadership expert John C. Maxwell in his book, Everyone Communicates, Few Connect offers us the following suggestions. You know that you have connected when, one, people put in extra effort and they go an extra mile. Two, when you receive unsolicited appreciation. People say positive things about what you have said. Number three, unguarded openness. They demonstrate trust. They are willing to open up more. Number four, when they show increased communication. In other words, they are expressing themselves more readily. Number five, he suggests that you will know you're connecting when people are sharing enjoyable experiences. They feel good about what they are doing. And number six, he says emotional bondedness is a sign of connecting. They, they display a connection on an emotional level. And then seven, he says there is positive energy. Their emotional batteries are charged by being together. Eight, there is a growing synergy. Their effectiveness is greater than the sum of their contributions. And finally, he says there is unconditional love. They are accepting without reservations. Recently, a video went viral. An esteemed man, forgetting to mute the video feed on his device, was caught on camera peeing while in a Zoom meeting. It's funny. Clearly, he wasn't connected. Think about you in prayer. Think about you in church, especially the virtual church. Are you also caught in the act like the diplomat? How is your connection when you communicate with God? How is your connection in worship? Do you remain focused on the audience of your worship 
or is your attention drawn away by the distractions that surround? It is said that we are bombarded by 35,000 messages in a day. In the current situation where virtually every church, every business, every politician, every family member is online, this statistic could have doubled. Wherever you turn, someone is trying to get your attention. How do we choose which message to tune in and which ones to tune out? At the same time, we have messages we want to get across to others. The question is, how can you make your words count? Think about your relationship with others. Think about your prayer life, which is your communication with God. Does God delight in listening to you praying? The secret is in connecting to the secret place. My prayer for you and for the body of Christ is that we learn to connect more and more with God. He has promised to answer us. That way, he will entrust us more and more with the mysteries of his kingdom. That way, he will give us revelation upon revelation of who he is because he trusts us more. And that way, you and I will enjoy talking to him more and more. And your relationship with others will get better and better because those who connect take their relationships and their lives to another level. Shalom. Shalom.